Now, I, I would like you to, uh, to read this, this is an example in, in filing okay, and I would like you to work this out. So, what we have here is a, a piling activity for a bridge, <coughs> on one side you have soft soil, on the other side it is soft rock. Okay, so, the, now this is another yet another factor which can change your production and productivity and the number of piles per abutment is 20 length of each pile is 15 meters, the working time for the winch. So, you can see here it is a winch operated system, where they keep dropping the you know bay, you, you pull it pull the winch and then you drop the hammer and you know you, you grab out soil and then you start pouring your pile. Normal productivity, productivity of a winch is 1.5 meters an hour is the progress you will make, productivity in soft rock is so much. Okay, so, you can assume that this is the productivity in soft soil, straightforward why do not you just do the calculation and let me know. So, if you have any questions ask me. So, what is our quantity? Yeah. So, I can take so so look at the uh, look at the productivity it is given in per hour. what what per hour? Mm, meters per hour. Meter per hour means meter per hour of uh, pile length pile, driven. pile length. Okay. So, it makes sense to put my quantities in what? Meter, meter, meters. Meters. Which means it is 20, 20 into 50. Okay, that's 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 it. Okay, after that, on your on your uh, soft soil, my productivity is one point five meters per hour. Is soft soil is one point five meter per day per hour per hour per hour. Right. Normal productivity is one point five meters per hour. Yeah. Where do you get the day? From? Fifteen meters a day. Per hour. Oh, oh yeah, if you are taking that is what I am taking okay, there is a point here okay. <laughs> 1.5 meters per hour okay, which means uh, duration 10 hours a day, one day that is for one day for soft rock it is coming to be 50 so 0.5 meters per hour 57 days. Ninety days and sixty days. Duration? Duration is what? Uh, ten, ten hours a day. Ten hours a day. So point five meters. So you have a total of three hundred meters. No, two three hundred oh. minus fifteen. It will be now. Three hundred minus fifteen because uh, uh, already we have twenty piles on each side, right? Per yeah. abutment. Yeah. 2020. 2020. Piling for each of the abutments. Okay. So, there will be two different timings that you yeah. get. Sorry. So, duration for this also is 10 hours a day, right? Duration is same. No, no, duration is for, for putting 300 okay. meters of okay. piling. So, that okay. Okay. You, uh, the so notation is same. What, what did, what did, what, what is the confusion? I mean, below soft soil you have written the same duration, so I thought it was about this. Uh, not duration. So here I'm I'm actually going one point. I'm going 15 meters an hour, or like we said, I mean 1.5 15 meters a day. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I should do 20 days, right? Yeah, we have to do 20 days. Yeah. So duration of this thing, so total is equal to 20 days. Okay. Here it is. Yeah. Duration of duration. Okay. Uh, work duration. Then as activity duration how much? 60 days. 60 days. Now, in one case you have 20, the other case you have 60. Based on some of our earlier discussion, what would you do? I'll, I'll decrease the number of working hours. Would you decrease the number of working hours? 
uh, actually i'll decrease it for uh, soft soil and increase it for soft okay soil. you can do that but let's say what i mean let's say from a project perspective i would like both durations to be roughly the same If I decrease, see the problem if I decrease the working day duration is I am going to be paying the person the same amount for that day. Finish, finish, finish up the, the you know, productivity on right. the harder side. I could finish this on 20 days and shift the equipment and crew yeah. to the other side and I have two crew working. So, on 20 days he is only finished one third and I have two crew there working to try to bring this in. Okay, so, these are some of the options you will have when you start doing things. So, let us go through this. So, you have uh, you know for this is 15 you know 15 meters the per day and going in at 20 days as we calculated. If you look at it for, uh, for the uh, soft rock, we have factored we have taken the factor in and it comes in at 60 days. Okay, so, here the other uh, part to look at is the way we have said 20 number of piles, but we are looking at productivity as. So, we would I mean the, the term they would use is depending on pile diameter and length, it is dia and dia length, but here we are just taking length assuming dia because the diameter is a Okay, Now, we can again take this with a working uh, working time factor and we take take it again as 8.5 instead of a 10 hour day and what was 20 now becomes 24 days what 60 now becomes 71 days. Okay. So, so all this shows is that even something though so simple can get a little more uh, twisted it starts getting more and more complicated as we get variations and uh, and un uncertainties from different regions. Okay, uh, are there any questions on what we call right now parametric estimating? So this is typically what we did here: productivity, quantity is parametric estimating. The most uh, what is a numerically sound way to go about it, and you understand the challenges behind it. Okay, uh, we probably at least as far as uh, the rest of this class goes, we will not look at so much as the factoring. We will mostly take duration as a value given and focus on doing other calculations with it. But remember the uncertainty of getting this duration itself is a, is a, is a big question mark which sometimes causes most of the disruption in a project schedule. Okay. When you get back into uh, you know looking at duration, there are certain durations which are independent of productivity. For example, a pile load test, it has to be done it will take a certain time independent of you know what you do how you do or you know what's happening same thing with curing of concrete i can change curing based on curing compound but given a certain uh, certain spec it will take its time to cure I, I mean the accelerated curing is possible but again within that spec that's what i have to wait for i cannot change it uh, on site based on a certain uh, you know crew size or anything else Okay, so, we actually now coming back to the uh, various techniques which we had uh, shown earlier for duration estimating. You can see we had uh, expert judgment, analogous estimating, parametric estimating, three point estimate and reserve analysis. Now, taking the first two, you know expert judgment and analogous estimating. These are very much used in construction, but only problem is they do not have a real base uh, on which people are, are, are using it today. It just comes of what we call seat of the pants estimate and it, it continues like that. There are more formal ways such as the Delphi technique, uh, you know which you have a series of a, uh, experts and you keep asking them quest, you know the question till they converge in on a specific number. But uh, you know we are, we are not using this into in the, in the level which we uh, need to yet, but that is from the scientific perspective, but from the Pure heuristic perspective, it is used significantly, and uh, the main reason for this is like we discussed. Okay, so, so you know, I will not have factored productivity value. I will not have a number of crew. I will not know what the number of crew available to me when I go onto a site is. 
I will not know actual productivity. I only know total quantity of work. How can I actually estimate activity? So all of the arithmetic we did will not be, we will not be able to do and so we have to resort to expert or heuristic. That is one. Some and sometimes it just does not make sense to you know calculate all these factors when there are experienced people who can actually give you a fairly good reliable estimate. I mean we did a, a, a we did kind of duration estimating last week on the earlier class right how much time you need to study for a subject. So if I take that as an example what is what the kind of estimates you all gave me were based on what? Previous experience. Absolutely heuristic expert if I wanted to make it parametric what would I do? Number of chapters. Number yeah you will start breaking down into number of chapters each chapter start putting times on it you know and then uh, factor in your lunch breaks factor in this factor in that but but sometimes the effort of making that estimate is more than <laughs> the, the uh, you know the number that comes out so you will say no i am just going to say half a day and that is good enough okay so that's the reason expert uh, estimates are used and it's 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 very practical and if it's used correctly it's it's something that's very valuable when we another factor we talked about uh, uncertainty you know duration three point estimate so this is uh, it's certainly more advanced. We know due that there's a lot of uh, duration. I mean, all the durations we talk about are come with uncertainty. Okay, and we have to start using probabilistic uh, probabilistic distributions, and uh, we have options. We can uh, there's a simple option is a three point estimate. Okay, which says again this is an expert judgment, but not giving you a single value, but giving you three values, saying you can call it the lowest, most likely, highest, or you know optimistic most likely pessimistic okay so you can have uh, values like this which are based on expert judgment or if you really have data you can go ahead and start plotting distributions of your of your duration and when you start plotting distributions obviously you get capturing much more information than an average so far we have talked about only average productivity average and everything is based on average here we are talking or, or factored average average for this kind of work in this height is the, that is the average on that and that is how we are factoring it from you know base. Now we start talking about uh, more char characterizing it in terms of uncertainties. So we will see both of these kind of, uh, of duration distributions one for PERT and one for Monte Carlo later in the course uh, we will not discuss very much about you know the derivation of uh, the distribution and things like that we will learn how to use it at that stage okay so if i go back to the techniques uh, you know we have actually covered all of these uh, techniques very briefly that's expert judgment analogous and three point estimate we have covered parametric estimate in uh, you know more detail because it's what is structured and uh, probably probably easier to use it if those numbers are available the reserve analysis is again like i said a buffering technique which is mostly based on expert judgment okay so i'm not covering that in detail like i said there's very little material available on how one technically goes about the reserve analysis and uh, to summarize we have covered all of these we you know we've talked about the duration we have talked about the way to estimate we discussed in detail the parametric method and the applicability of different methods. If there are questions, I'll take it. Okay, so this is uh, an important foundation to the whole planning issue, but a lot of times not given appropriate uh, time, and people just go with values, which then kind of skews the whole flow. And sometimes people actually work backwards. They say this is the duration we want, and without actually going into resources or anything, they start plugging in the numbers which are expected without planning the resources or the productivity. And when they actually get onto site and try to meet that du duration which they had assumed, they find they cannot. Okay, so very important uh, estimate which drives the whole project planning. Any question?
okay thank you